Well, welcome back. Welcome back to the third and final hour of Andy Snowden with music from stage and screen. And anything you might have seen on your television box, it's just gone five past two. It's 5th of 11th, the 2016 Bonfire Night. Oh, God. Right. Uh, <laughs> is anybody as excited as me? I, I, I doubt it. Right, coming up after Madness and Our House, uh, we got this blinding story of Wrexham's brand new hero, Mr. Will Edwards, Pride of Britain Award winner. That's coming up in about, ooh, let's say two minutes and 54 seconds. There's nothing like being precise, is there? His madness. Father, where's his Sunday best? Madness. That was where we used to sing. Brilliant. Love Madness. I saw Madness last that was last year or the year before. I think it was the year before actually. Never seen them live before, but they are absolutely belting. Callan FM on 105 FM. Community Radio at its best. Right then, how about this for a story? Uh, Anybody that was watching uh, Tuesday night's Pride of Britain Awards, hosted by the uh, the beautiful Carol Vorderman there, and uh, the programme was going swingingly, and uh, and then suddenly, um, anybody that lives in the Wrexham area was in for a little bit of a shock, a little bit of a surprise, because suddenly, this happened. This year's award for outstanding bravery goes to someone who the judging panel felt is one of life's good Samaritans. This dramatic CCTV footage shows the terrifying moment when a pensioner's car burst into flames. I was horror struck. I thought to myself, I've had it. The driver, 73 year old Anne Wade, somehow managed to pull over onto a slip road. I could see flames engulfing the windscreen in front of me. With the central locking burnt out, Anne was trapped. Worse still, the car was rapidly filling with toxic smoke. Nobody was stopping. I was thinking, why isn't somebody coming to help me? Don't worry, I'm going to get you out. A young man came, like an angel, a guardian angel. The angel who did stop was 24-year-old supermarket worker Will Edwards from Wrexham. Couldn't see anybody else prepared to stop. I knew I had to do something in that moment. Open the door, come on! Eventually, other drivers did pull in and called 999. They were shouting at me, you know, get away, it's going to blow up. It's going to explode! He just ignored them. Completely no fear for his own life. I knew that she didn't have long. In his desperation to save Anne, Will grabbed a wheel wrench. The broken glass had sliced deep into Will's hand. He just carried on. Come on! Had to be now or never. Yanked her out of the vehicle. Will pulled Anne to safety eight minutes before the fire crew got there. A Will's definitely a hero in our eyes. By the time we had arrived on scene, I think it would have been too late to have saved her. Another couple of minutes and I would have been dead. I don't think I'd be able to live with myself if, I, if I'd left and not helped her. I think he's wonderful. So there you go. That's the uh, pretty much the story. And uh, the young lad's name is Will Edwards. Uh, works in the supermarket. Works in Asda. I'm going to say it. And uh, you, you can't put your foot around these things, can you? There's only one or three or four supermarkets it can be. Anyway, it was Asda's. And uh, yeah, and I saw that on Pride of Britain. And I said to my wife, I've got to get in touch with that lad. I need to have a chat with him, which is exactly what I did. And yesterday morning, uh, he popped into Calon FM Studios and. And, uh, and we had a really good chat for about half an hour. And uh, he even let me hold his award, which I found very intriguing because it was really heavy. <laughs> 
So anyway, brace yourselves. Here comes a story that is just going to rock you sideways. Mr. Will Edwards. Here he comes. This story, when I first heard it, and I mean, it's a strange thing, because any time you hear the word Wrexham on the telly, your ears prick up anyway. Yeah. But when you hear the word Wrexham, you know, Pride of Britain Awards, you go, what? Yeah, and yeah, my, yeah. my wife looked at me and she went... Yeah, didn't you know? I was going, no, I didn't know. <laughs> so how did, what, what happened when, when did the, the, whole, the whole story start? You were obviously, were you driving to work, were you? Yeah, I was driving to, well, no, actually, I was driving to see my horses because um, I lived in Manchester for about three years. Okay. And I was driving to see my horses up there and as I've come around the corner, I've seen, uh, seen this car just on the side of the motorway, essentially. It wasn't in a hard shoulder because they'd taken the um, uh, hard shoulder out because they're, uh, upgrading smart motorway right okay so, so this car was essentially in the live lane right and um as i've gone past the doors weren't open the fire was just raging on basically and um the first thing you look for is if there's anybody you yeah know, over the barriers and there was nobody so as no. i've gone past i've just seen um uh, a woman who is now we know as Anne, uh slumped over the steering wheel and that was kind of like the last image yeah. That I saw. At the present time, I was in the passenger seat, and the person driving, I just shouted to them to uh, stop. And before they had even stopped, I would just gone out of the car. So oh, so you were with somebody else? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, right, okay. Because like, so. a, a lot was made out of when um, when it was on the TV, and she said that people seemed to be just driving past and not stopping. Yeah. Which confused everybody, I think, that was watching it. But um, you kind of think it's all being sorted yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Weirdly. You know, but you wouldn't, you'd never expect that. So anyway, you, you got out, and this lady is uh, not unconscious now. No, um, when I, when I seen her, she she looked unconscious for all intents and purposes. But as soon as I knocked on that window, she just came to life. Then. Right. Um, she looked at me, and the look that she gave me was yeah. I couldn't I couldn't describe it yeah. really. Um, you know, I tried communicating with her, but she. Just through shock, she just couldn't understand what I was trying to tell her. Right. I was actually trying to tell her to open the door from the inside by the you know yeah. the lock that you can pull up. Um, but she she just couldn't get it into her head. Because that that was the other thing that everybody thought. What a stupid design that a, a central locking can lock on. Yeah. In an emergency like that. Yeah. So she could have literally picked it up with her fingers. Yeah. But that didn't cross her mind. Obviously. I think it did. Um, I think it was just a. The fact that she couldn't, yeah. um, I think she she honestly did try and yeah. you know, she just wasn't able to do it. Okay. So it looked from the reconstruction, I'm going with, that's how it actually was. Yeah. You're whacking it with your elbow? Is that yeah, what you did? I, was, uh, I, tried, um, I tried first with my elbow. Um, Banging your elbow into the window? Yeah, 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 right, yeah. Okay. Like you see on the movies yeah, and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And it's a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> um, and... You know, I, I was giving it some welly, yeah. and about five, six attempts after that, I was like, well, this isn't working. Yeah. So at this point, I've run back to my car, where luckily I packed a wheel brace that morning. I don't know why, yeah. I just packed that wheel brace into my car that morning. Right. And ran straight to that and came back. And even with that, it took me about three goes to, to, um, yeah. to do it. And like I said, I was giving it some welly. So, um... do you feel like the adrenaline was helping with that? Because I mean, as you say, it's not easy to, to it's not easy to break a window. I think people think you just throw a. Mind you, if you were a child and you threw a pebble, it probably goes through yeah, straight yeah. the first time. Yeah, yeah. But uh, um, in, in an emergency like that, you, you don't realise what you're kind of dealing with. Yeah. My dad said something to me last night. A friend of his was in a car accident, and a car went on fire, and he headbutted the window out. The front window, oh, wow. <laughs> which confused me because I thought, well, <laughs> surely your feet come first. <laughs> and put in the window. My God. Anyway, so you you finally smash the window, the the driver's side window. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, and, um, and and you, and you said you cut yourself. Badly. Yeah. So basically, what's happened is when I've hit the window, the glass is shattered, but my my hands followed through and forced the window. Yeah. Uh, well, smashed the window then, and um, I. I didn't even feel it. Yeah. Um, all I remember is my brain telling my hand to, you know, pick up the lock. Yeah. My hand just not doing anything. So I'm like, um, all right, okay. So I looked at my hand. 
there's this giant hole in the in the middle of my hand, essentially, and I'm just like... So is that the scar you've got there now? Yeah, that's the scar i got there. So I severed my um, ring finger and my uh, middle finger, uh, the tendons in that. Right. And, um, yeah, it, it didn't bleed until I actually got Anne away from the car. So, like, talking about adrenaline, I suppose that's the amazing thing about it. Yeah. It didn't bleed at all, and as soon as I got her away, it just... So when you when you smash the window, could you open the door? Could you get her out through the door, or did you have to get her out through the window? No, I've got to, I, I managed to get it uh, um, open the door, but right. I suppose that would have been the the next step, getting, yeah. trying to get her through the window. Like, but flipping out, man! It must have been going through your mind all the time. There's any any second, this car's gonna blow. Honestly, that, nothing went through my head. You know, people say, "Were you scared?" It's a really brave thing that you did, and all that kind of stuff. But nothing went through my head, and I, I suppose that. That was the great thing about it, that I didn't actually think about them consequences. It was a little bit but being like a kid again, you know, when you're yeah. climbing a tree and yes. stuff like that. Yeah. And you, you think, oh, I'm invincible now. Uh, yeah. And I, I suppose that that's what went through my head. But really, looking back, back at it, people say, oh, it's brave. And I was thinking, a mm, little bit daft as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I suppose, yeah. Would you do it again? I'd do it again in a heartbeat, though. Uh, um, but since then, you were saying you, you've decided to join the fire service. Is yes, that right? Yes. Um, so I've uh, decided to join the fire service, North Wales. Um, my local one, uh, local station is going to be Johnstown. So really looking forward to that. Right. It's, it's, um, it's been quite an adventure. But it was kind of like... As soon as the incident happened, it was just like a switch clicked in my in my head, and I was like, "Right, this is what I want to do from now on." Yeah, and it's I went through with Great Manchester Fire and Rescue, and you know they helped me a lot. They they showed me um, what kind of it took to join the fire service, and they put on like a mock physical test day. Yeah, and I did it, and a lot harder than you thought. A lot harder than I thought. <laughs> At one point, I'm pretty sure I was keel, keeled over, breathing, yeah. just like, I, I thought, right, I, I need to sort some of that out here. Yeah. Um, so I went my I went to my my mate's gym, he owns the gym in Rose, and um, he uh, he just basically, he's gone through everything with me, and we've, right. got, we've got up to where I need to be now, so I'm no longer keeled over in the corner <laughs> somewhere. Because I, I was going it surprised me, actually, because as a child, you just assume that firemen are, you know, blokes to put out fires. Yeah. You don't assume, because, I mean, people were, like, coming back, they, they'd, like, served in the army, and those are the lads who were getting the jobs in the in the fire service because they were fit, they were strong, you know. Bearing in mind, I suppose, you'd have to, you'd have to pick up a, a, a dead weight, fully grown adult, and carry them downstairs and all sorts. So you must have to be quite fit and strong and all the rest of it. Well, yeah. Um, and a little bit mad. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit mad. A bit sadistic. You know, enjoy your running into fires and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Where everybody else is running out, you're the person running in. So, yeah. yeah. I bet your girlfriend's thinking, just make sure it's just cats in trees and I'll be happy. Well, I don't know. I think, I think she would enjoy the peace and quiet. <laughs> Oh, uh, brilliant! So, uh, so when did you find out the, the um, that you were up for an award, the uh, the Pride of Britain? About a week and a half ago. It was. It was really. It really wasn't that kind of long ago. I remember I was in work and I, I got, um, I got like a phone call um, because I, ITV had been in contact with me prior and they kind of tricked me a little bit and they said, "Oh, we're going to do another um, like documentary about it because the BBC did one." earlier in the year. Okay. So they said, oh, we're going to, you know, we're, we we want to film you and Anne and all that kind of stuff and, you know, we're going to do a documentary on bravery. So, yeah. you know, I, I was just like, all oh, right, okay, here we go again. And um, next thing I know, I, I get a call like a week and a half ago, like I said, and, you know, they're saying, oh, I've won a Pride of Britain award and they're going, how, how, how did I get to this stage? Yeah. You know, it, it's, at, at the meantime, you know, it's going off in work and, you yeah. know, and I'm there just standing in the middle of my yard and just going, all right, okay. Um, Amazing. What, 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 what do you say to that? Because it's kind of just totally took me off kilter. And what, what did you say to that? Because, I mean, you, in your speech on stage, you said never in your wildest dreams could you ever picture yourself standing there collecting, a, well, any of it, yeah, <laughs> really. Well, <laughs> that's quite an extraordinary. 
extraordinary thing to do, Will. You know, I'm very grateful for everybody choosing for me to be here because in my head, I could never dream of being here in my entire life. So thank you very much, everybody. I'll tell you what, I couldn't be a celebrity. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> well, did you have to go down the red carpet and stuff? Yeah, we had to go down right. the red carpet. Yeah. Um, Where was it at? The Grosvenor? The Grosvenor in London, Nice, yeah. plush hotel, that, isn't it? Very, very nice. Um, yeah. And, you know, there's people that you'd never imagine meeting there and... Your Did you get well. to meet everybody you wanted to meet, or was it all a little bit guarded? Um, some of it was guarded. Um, you know, Don't you, suppose you could just walk up to Prince Charles and say, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How are you doing, Charles? <laughs> um, a lot of it was guarded. I mean, you would have, like, uh, like the more the more A-list celebs, like Sir Tom Jones and all yeah. that, they, they'd be kind of, like, directed by their managers and stuff yeah. like that. So, you know, people like that, were a little bit harder to get to, but as soon as they realised who you were and when you went on stage, you'd get f- people just flocking towards you. Basically. Really? Once you'd been yeah, on, yeah, it was yeah. a different story? Yeah. Right. So once they knew who you were, yeah. that was it then. Uh, you were just getting people, oh, can I have your photo taken with you and all that kind of stuff. Just, Brilliant. Yeah, it was like, oh, all right, okay. So is your phone full of pictures of... Uh... Your, um, your, who did you go with? Did you go with your, did you say your, your mum and what now? Yeah, right, so my mum and dad came. I managed to, um, I managed to cheekily get two extra tickets because they were only saying you're only allowed two people there. So that would have been me and my partner. And then, um, uh, you know, you don't ask, you don't get. So yeah. I was just like, right, can my mum and dad come too? Our table was mainly Hollyoak stars and Jamelia, you know, the singer. And yeah. That, which is quite surreal, really, when you're eating your dinner. Yeah. Um, and, and you're eating it in front of these people, and you're just like, oh, OK. They're all bad influences. They just kept on topping your wine up and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> They're like, oh, I'll go and have some more. Just about as you're about to go on the stage, yeah. you're just like, yeah. I think this should be my last one now. <laughs> Party time in about ten minutes. Yeah. Who was, who was your favourite um, celebrity that you met? The best person for me was um, the woman that was actually sitting next to me, Nikki Sanderson from Hollyoaks. All right. Very pretty girl. Um, but she, all, all, all the way through, she was really supportive. You could just go in, right, um, you deserve to be here and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. Telling me what I should do and all that kind of stuff. And then just ended up talking about box sets and stuff like that. So yeah. you're just... Fantastic. Yeah. So you, you, you were actually given your award by the uh, the Strictly Come Dancing gang. Yeah, that's it. Is there a, is there a particular reason for that, or was it just I them that it, was chosen for you, or I what? think it was just allocated for me. Because one lady, they said, who's your favourite band? And she said, take that, and well, here they yeah, are. Yeah, and then yeah. when they said they Strictly Come Dancing for you, I, I just thought you might have been a fan of the show. And uh, they... Yeah, I, lo- I love to waltz around. <laughs> And obviously, because yeah, you work at Asda, yes, uh, they they did that. Uh, Ed Bulls bringing on the, uh... the the Toyota shop, and well, the crazy thing about that is because I was, I'm so used to just taking the Toyota. If you look carefully, I'm, I'm about to grab the Toyota <laughs> shop, and I'm like, all right, okay, I'll have that. <laughs> oh, fantastic! Kind of <laughs> do you yeah, do, do you get? Did you stay in London? Yes, we stayed in London. Yeah, we stayed about um, a mile and a half away from. From the actual Did they program. they put you up and everything? Yeah. yeah, they put us up and everything. The most shocking bit was when I was in the Grosvenor. Um, I asked for a whiskey and it cost me sixteen pound twenty. So I was just like, "All right, okay, no, oh. no, no more, no more." One shot, one, one, one normal. One, yeah, one, um, one yeah. single of a um, just a single malt. Sixteen quid. Man, that's yeah. ridiculous, isn't it? But even the pubs in London, you know, they're all everything's expensive in London, isn't it? If you're the sort of person that's 16 quid for a shot of whiskey, don't bother you. Yeah. I'd like to be that person. Oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Will, th- thanks for coming in because that what a, what a fantastic story. Do you still stay in touch with Anne? Yeah, I talk to uh, I talk to her most weeks to be honest. Oh, know? really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's um. Not really much of time. She's quite in tune with technology, so she like either emails me or texts me. Yeah. I mean, at times I barely know how to text with these new phones, so I'm there just going like that. But no, she's, you know, asking yeah. me how I'm doing. You know, sometimes I even go up to see her and um, you know right. have dinner there and 
yeah, it's, she's a lovely, lovely lady. I've met her whole family, well, not her whole family, but her immediate family. And right. That that was an experience and a half as well. It is, isn't it? Because I think when people say, if someone was to say, it, you know, he's a real-life hero and he saved someone's life, once you've done that, your life must be very, very different. But for their life, knowing that it could have been so different so easily, yeah. you know, and especially for her family as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I met met her daughter, Emma, and the first thing that she did was hug me. Mm. And she was just like, thank you very much. Which yeah. was, that was emotional, because before then I've not really thought about it. Because when they say... Like about trauma, you disassociate your mind yeah. from it, don't you? Yeah. And I'd not really thought about it until that point, until you actually start meeting the family of the person that you actually said. So yeah. It's a bit like... So did you have to go into hospital with that hand? Yes, I did. Yeah, I spent, spent. I think I spent longer in hospital than Anne did. <laughs> oh, uh, really? but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Which, which was which was crazy, but um, you know they put me on the emergency emergency uh, uh, surgery list. Right. And um, three days later, I, I came out like. Um, was it in Manchester? That yeah, Salford Royal. I went to. Right. Um, okay. Couldn't couldn't fall couldn't fall it at all. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, the amount of kind of like. People at that time were like tagging me in like the MEN news and like Daily Post and all that kind of stuff. But um, you know, my my phone was just going mental. And the same just now. I think within an hour and a half of like the program airing, yeah. I think I had about sixty new messages. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like people I didn't even know just saying, "Oh, well yeah. done." And all that. It wasn't part of your day job to save somebody's life. It's not part of our day job to be dancing on TV, but I've got to say, <laughs> you are so much braver than any of us in this room. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing what you do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Edwards. So there you go. <laughs> get, oh, get the right mic. There we are. Marvellous. There you go, Mr. Will Edwards, Wrexham's brand new hero. And now uh, we're picking up the outstanding award for bravery at the 2016 Pride of Britain Awards. Congratulations to him. Fantastic. Well done. And uh, anybody interested in the tennis with Andy Murray, uh, a bit of breaking news for you that uh, Ryanich, who he was supposed to be playing this afternoon, has uh, he's actually bailed out of the match. So so Andy Murray gets a buy into the final and is now officially world number one. Right, there you go then. <laughs> Everyone jumping for joy. Apart from him, seemingly. All right, here we go. Is the brand new one from Robbie Williams. It's off his new album, I should say. It's called Heavy Entertainment Show. The album is called Heavy Entertainment Show. And uh, I quite like it. So, there, I've said it. <clears throat> Get ready to sing. It's good. Welcome to the heavy- 